welcome. As you can see, I have two beautiful, talented women in the studio today. We're going live on Instagram Live on TLC Unleashed, and the show's about to start, so... All right. How's everybody today? It's raining in California. Everyone doesn't know what to do. What? About the rain? The rain, yeah. Oh, no. It's like, it's a, a storm. Right. Dropping cover. <laughs> I got stuck on the 405 and got off the freeway because it was a parking lot. There were accidents, four or five accidents at least. And so I got off the freeway because I saw the police. That's why I got off the freeway. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the popo. -po Go on. Speeding tickets. Popo's bothering you. Yeah. No, no. But so I, I passed it, went back, passed your studio, and came back. So we're we are here. We we're here. We're it. happy. Yay. Tony and McClure aren't. And I said that right? Tony McClure aren't. You said All it right. All right. Yes, the beautiful, enough. talented singer, producer, director, <laughs> uh, actress, <laughs> and Lorraine Landon, beautiful, talented. I mean, they're they have so much talent between these two women. I, it's we're gonna need six shows to do this. So <laughs> twelve New actress, yeah, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm this is gonna be fun today. I'm excited. So we've got Lee uh, Michaels on the keyboard. He's getting the Hi, show Lee. started. Yeah, Hi, you've Lisa, met. my best friend Lisa. I love you. Hi. Hi, Hi everybody's Lisa. watching. Lisa French. Yeah, we've got Worldwide. And also a shout out to Mel Novak. Mel He's, Novak. Uh, you've been in three movies yes, with him. Yes, absolutely. yes, absolutely. Syndicate Smasher, uh, um, uh, Samurai Cop 2, yep. and the upcoming Agramon Skate that I star in. And Mel's in it as well. Ooh, Ooh. I can't so, wait to talk about it once oh, we go live. I'm so excited. He's That's an amazing true. man. Yes. Yeah, I told him, I said, Lorraine's on the show today. Yes. So, <laughs> talented. He goes, you have the beautiful blondes with you today. Oh, Why did you not invite me? Right? <laughs> <Is that true? laughs> yes. Yeah, well, he didn't, but I know what he's thinking. Of <laughs> course. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, everybody on Instagram Live, I hope you're having a blessed day. We are live in the studio in Los Angeles, California, on the Hollywood Vibe Sports and Live Show with TLC Unleashed and these beautiful ladies. So, we're going to be talking about their careers. Uh, the daughter of Doug McClure, we're yes. going to be talking about your father, what an yeah. amazing man he was, and, um, and about all the shows that you've done, your mm -hmm. careers. And we were talking about your career, too, Tiny. Yes. Uh, Tiny's had, you know, you're doing... Pretty much everything. Well, yeah. No, I started off a model. You asked about that. Started off yeah. a model, then became an actress. And, um, no, actually, a singer first before an actress at a recording deal with RCA Records. Yeah. And then WTG CBS. Uh, a lot of you might know me as Tawny Kane. Um, oh my gosh. I, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Oh so, my God. yeah. And then I saw I sang uh, saw um, songs for the Terminator. I went on tour. And all that, and then uh, afterwards, then I was doing a lot of acting, and I still sang. And now I, you know, being in the industry a really long time, well, you just still do it. So it's um, I'm a producer, and director as well. Stand by. Woo live. All right. Well, we are about to go live on air. You guys can also see this on Chase and Cowan Facebook Live. Quiet. Go. Good evening and welcome to the TLC Unleashed Show, Hollywood Vibes, Sports and Life with your host Tracy Lynn. We are live in the studio, we've been live on Instagram so we were talking a little bit there but I would like to introduce you to the show tonight. We have these two beautifully talented young women with me tonight and I have Tawny McClure Arntz. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Hello everybody. Yeah, and the daughter of Doug McClure so we'll be talking about that and the beautiful Lorraine Landon. Hello everybody, thank you so much for joining us. I Thank think, you. I think there's too much talent in this uh, studio today. What do you think? It's it's hot in here. Lee's agreeing, and Dan Kennedy's the man behind the camera. So <laughs> shout out to Dan today. Um, so we've got a show ahead of us. We're going to be talking about. Well, it's always women empowerment. That's what I yeah. seem to fall back on. We want to talk about, you know, getting women into the industry, what's been going on in the last couple of years with the industry. We we'll talk about your careers and how you all got started. So let's, uh, let's talk a little bit. I want to talk to you first, Tani, how you got started in the industry of, well, acting. You started modeling. Well, because my father, being an actor, mm -hmm. you know, Doug McClure, I pretty much was born and raised in the industry. So that's about all I know. Yeah. I jokingly used to say that I grew up on a back lots of Universal Studios, but I kind of did because he <laughs> was on the Virginian and I was always there. And so it was just a natural thing for me. My grandmother was an opera singer. So I started off, my first job was, was actually as a model, but then I became a singer with RCA Records and WTGC, WTG Records and mm -hmm. um, with a group called, well, it was called Tawny Kane, and then it was Tawny Kane Band. 
and uh, no, so I just, it's natural for me to just keep progressing and now I'm a producer and director and I'm tired. <laughs> Just kind of doing be. too. Yeah. I'm tired. That's a, I know. That's a lot of stuff. <laughs> I don't know. I just kept saying, I, well, I can caffeine. do that. I can do that. I can do that. <laughs> I can do that. That's a lot. That's well, you just, you so, know. how did you get involved with the producing then? Oh, me? Yeah. Um, my father, well, this is kind of a little you know, sad story, really, but my father died of cancer in 1995. Yeah, and right before he lives. passed away, he had started a production company, Started it's called Tawny Productions, mm -hmm. and he had wanted to produce films. Mm -hmm. And after he passed away, I decided that I was going to follow in his footsteps, and I produced a feature film, and then ever since then, I've been producing and directing commercials, and mm -hmm. uh, I produced a series for Los Angeles Magazine called Big Shots, and okay. um, all kinds of different things like that. Oh, I won a National Journalism Award for a uh, documentary I did for Fox, uh, about Betty White. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then another one for Hugh Hefner, and uh, so we, you know, I've been busy, yeah. uh, but uh, you know, I enjoy it. I like being in the business and doing. I'm directing a commercial this weekend, so. Okay. I feel really. To tell us what kind of commercial? Uh, yeah, actually, it's um, it's for a perfume company called Montwood. Okay. It's uh, gonna we're gonna the commercial's supposed to be similar to the um. Natalie Portman Chanel commercials, it's not the same budget, but <laughs> that's it's bigger. Yeah. But it's bigger, yeah. It's bigger that's and what better. We're do. And um, I know I'm sort of jumping ahead where you might be thinking, uh, but I noticed I started producing over 20 years ago and directing, and I remember the very first time I decided that I was going to become a producer, I was at the AFM, the American Film Market, mm -hmm. and I was telling one of my producer friends, and by then I had uh, started in about I don't know, 70 or 80 low budget action films and, you know, uh, you know, sexy films and things like that. And, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean I, you know, not you know, intelligent just because I can do action and this, that, and the other. And I was telling him, I'm not gonna say any names, but I, I said, Hey, you know what I really want to do? I think I'm going to start producing. Mm -hmm. And he literally, no joke, went, that's nice. Stick to acting. Oh, yeah, right. And I remember going, mm -hmm. wow. And I was oh. so completely determined. And the doors have opened so much more in the, in the more recent years than it had 20 years ago. It's just dramatic. I mean, nowadays, sometimes I actually get a job because I'm a woman. This all happened with me. Really? Yeah. yeah with, within wonderful. about the last year, to be honest with you. That's, that's fabulous. I, we're that. really going to tap into that uh, as we go. I that's, know. I jumped ahead. But I was no, thinking of it because you asked me that. So That's like, phenomenal to hear because, you know, all the stuff that went on, especially last year, it was a tough time for mm -hmm. the industry. and. And for mm -hmm. women and, and men and just everyone in general. So we'll mm -hmm. tap into that a little bit today. You know, we won't get too extreme. But, um, you know, I, as a woman in the industry, I really want to, you know, be able to share with our listeners and viewers what that was like. And if, you know, we'll talk about a little bit of sexual harassment and things like that as well. So let's go into the positive side of the career. Laureen, let's talk about you a little bit. How okay. did it all begin for you? You've had such a phenomenal career. Thank you. Yeah, I, thank you so much. I've starred and co-starred in 37 feature films, yeah. and um, I've got four coming out, and I'm doing five this year. Yeah. So um, I started out uh, in second grade in a play. Uh, it was ca called Christmas Without Santa Claus, and I wanted to play Mrs. Claus, but they said, um, I don't know, what I don't remember what they said. So I played an elf, but I got the acting bug then, <laughs> and um, second grade, and then uh, mostly because my father uh, loved the old movies with Betty Davis and mm -hmm. uh, Marlon Brando, mm -hmm. uh, who I absolutely adored, and uh, uh, all the old great actors, uh, Humphrey Bogart, and mm -hmm. you know, um, I just you know watch all the old films with my dad. Yeah. <coughs> Pardon me, and and my mother, and. I always wondered what what is it like to be on the other over there on the other side of that movie screen or on the other side of that uh -huh. TV screen. What, what do you what do you have to do? How does that work? Yeah. Because I came from Canada, eh? you know. So hey, yeah, I hey. love it. Right? She just <laughs> fellow Canadian. I forgot to say yeah. fellow Canadian. So you're born and raised in Toronto, correct? Toronto, correct. Yeah. Yeah. Vancouver. And so I yeah Toronto yeah. But I spent a lot of time in Toronto, in Vancouver as well. Yeah. So when I came to, came to L.A., um, when I got out of high school, I was doing a lot of modeling. Mm -hmm. And I hated, I hated modeling. I thought it was very boring. So okay. when um, I had done these, a couple of low-budget films, and then um, 
I uh, was up in Las Vegas for uh, a billboard pageant, uh, Miss Black Velvet, mm -hmm. and it was narrowed down to two girls, and I met a fabulous casting director up there named Jackie Vascow, okay. and she said the casting movie in Los Angeles, a huge movie called All the Marvels with Peter mm -hmm. Falk. Mm -hmm. Now, Paul Newman was supposed to play the lead role, but he uh, backed out. Uh, because he went to do, I think, The Color of Money or another film. Mm. But anyway, I um, I didn't get the modeling job, and I honestly didn't care. The other girl got it. It was down to two of us. But um, with all the marbles, it was a uh, much, much more difficult and arduous uh, situation uh, because they saw over 2,000 girls. Oh, wow. Kathleen Turner was one of them, I believe, because she mentioned in an article that she went up for a wrestling movie at MGM and didn't get it. But they saw 2,000 girls, including Peter Fox's wife. And um, I ultimately, with Vicki Frederick, uh, got, got the role. So uh, Good that, for that you. was my first big film, my, I guess you call it breakout film, whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, I was incredibly athletic all my life mm -hmm. and very shy, impossibly shy, um, and still am to a degree. But um, I, I just, uh, you know, I lived in... Hey, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> we love Lee. Shout out to Lee tonight. I'm glad you got the memo to wear blue. You're Absolutely. looking very handsome and sharp. Yes, always. How, do you, how does a shy woman or shy girl become an actress? Tell oh, me that. You know, people ask me that all the time. And, and I guess because I try when I'm acting to do make... Uh, out of a skeleton, when you get the script, uh, I call it the skeleton, just mm -hmm. the words. I try to improvise and um, um, uh, make characters come alive, three-dimensional, full-bodied characters, so I, I'm hiding behind the character. Mm -hmm. I'm not Lorene. I'm never Lorene when I walk on this set. Yeah. I'm, and, and people will try to psych me out or do whatever, but when I go on a set, I'm the character. Mm -hmm. I wish I had come to the screening of uh, Hundra. Oh, last yes. Saturday night, it was sold out at the Egyptian Theater. Oh, I know. We it was completely it. sold out at the Egyptian Theater, and it was all about. It was so ahead of its time, mm -hmm. because the director Matt Simber is a was a feminist is a feminist director, mm -hmm. and and it was all about uh, the dawn of women's civilization. Mm -hmm. And I'm the head of a lead of an Amazon tribe. Yeah. I played a female Conan in it, and I did. I saw screen. that. I, I did all my own stunts in the film except uh, one and a half, and I say a half because a stunt woman, ultimately they used her footage because she was much faster coming 90 feet down a rope. Um, we both did it, but I did all the stunts and got injured a lot, but um, you know, I got to ride horses, I got to wow. go to Spain, to Almeria and Segovia and meet the most incredible uh, people, the loveliest people you could ever meet in your life. So. Um, uh, I wish you had been there because I know I'm everybody so was talking. I missed, uh, the reason they had the, the screened it at the Egyptian theater was because of this movement, the, mm. the hashtag Me Too movement, mm. the Times yes. Up movement. Yeah. So they they threw it in there, and yeah. it was it it was standing room only. It was my birthday, St. Patrick's Aww. Day, Aww. and birthday. thank you. I, it was overwhelming, and Aww. we did a Q and A afterwards. Matt mm -hmm. Simber, John Goff, the writer, and myself. And it was, uh, it was uh, an evening, uh, I think it was the, probably the greatest birthday I ever had. And Aww. it was, they had a huge cake there, uh, extemporaneously. I had no idea they were going to bring a cake. And You deserve it. That's what you should happy be. happy birthday, and I, w I wish you had been there. I wish you, Aww. I thought you knew about it. Or I, yeah, I actually was, um, We I didn't know about it, unfortunately, but I actually oh. was sick. I was getting over, I had a really bad cold last week, oh. and I. the thing with me is I, I kind of hide. If I go missing, it's usually because I'm sick or I'm exhausted. So it was kind of a combination of both. So I was getting my rest and uh, actually just slept. That's from lifting yes. your spirit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Lifting, yeah, houses. This woman has the most incredible... Body. Yeah, you do. I've Thank never you. seen in my life. <laughs> the most you. beautiful physique I have ever seen in my life. <laughs> I need to see the tips on the, the core. Aren't you, yes. a, aren't you a trainer as well? Yes, yeah. I am a lifestyle coach, so I teach life success, so fitness, health, nutrition, dietitian. And thank you. I mean, you both look incredible, too. Thank you obviously you. both work out. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, I get windy like, waking up in the morning, but no, I run my pit bulls, I swim yeah. uh, a lot. And I lift weights. I do lift yeah. weights, five pound weights. But 
uh, I, you know, if we both took off our shirts. Are we going to do that? <laughs> I, we're taking I our shirts off so. of the show today. But, awesome. No, I'm saying if we, if we had on, if we had on tank tops yeah. and we did the muscle thing, yeah. I think you'd, you'd get a 400 and I'd get you know, yeah. I got some. I got some. No, I, I, got some. I got some too. I got some too. We flex no. together. Look. Whoa, look at that. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. See? But and the funny thing is I only lift like 10 to 15 pounds. Oh. I don't lift a lot of weight. How often do you work out? Every day, seven that's days a week. That's it. Yeah. That's so it. I just, I'm, I love it. I'm in love with exercise. I'm in love with the feeling that I get. The endorphins. The endorphins, the serotonin. Mm -hmm. It's my drug. I love it. So, your drug. You know what? Yeah. It could, I could have worse problems, but I'm a fitness addict. I, I, I love it. <laughs> So I mean, in, in, it just keeps us in in shape. You're an amazing shape. My gosh, look at well, you. To be honest, Tiny. I, <laughs> this I is to be honest mostly from horse training because that's the other job. I mean, you're yeah. you're a fitness trainer, yeah. and my other job I, I, is is a horse trainer. I train and ride professionally, so it's wow. kept me. That keeps me in shape. Okay, and I should do more sort of stuff. <laughs> well, yeah. horse training, well, I know, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. I'm like, no, we're our own worst Where? critics because, I mean, you guys are bombshells. Yeah. Bombshells, we, good. I like yeah. That. Yes, yeah. bombshells. I always want to be, I actually was blonde at one point, but it wasn't the blonde that I wanted. It wasn't like this blonde. Uh -huh. It was like the orangey, brassy, couldn't really get the blonde. Mm -hmm. And mind you, it was sun in the days of oh, uh, sun in yeah. the box. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it has never worked for me, but I had that hair for quite a while. I thought I was rocking it at the time. Now I look back at pictures, you know, a couple years later, and, and I was like, like oh. wow, that did not look good. Yeah. <laughs> that I didn't look you. good at all. So tell me, I want to know... Well, my hair's natural except for the color. <laughs> Somebody asked me the other that day. They awesome. said, "They said, is that your natural color?" No, my hair, I, am blonde. I was like, "I am blonde, but I'm just barely yeah. blonde." Yeah. No, no, I am blonde. I, was, yeah. I had pictures of me in uh, grade school. I am now to my whole family. My mother was naturally blonde from Poland. Right. And yeah. you know, just, I just liked it a little more. It, it, you know, just like a little more. A little bit of enhancement. That's it. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Exactly. It's beautiful. We it's always really want beautiful. what we can't have, what we don't have, right? We always want to be blonde when we're brunette, or we want to oh, be yeah. shorter, taller. Or we want to have a, a yeah. certain physique that someone <laughs> has. And, and I'm trying to shave off some muscle because working oh, really? and doing a couple of uh, movies coming Good. up this year, too. Um, I've Which been movies? told um, I'm going to be doing the Martial Art Kid Part 2. Oh, that's and great. Then, wow. Yeah, so with Don Wilson, James Wilson. And, Don, uh, Don Wilson, Don the Dragon. Yeah, Don the Dragon. Yeah. Yeah. Don I did a movie with him. In India, yeah. Oh, you yeah. did? Yeah, yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. That's amazing. You There's such good people. James and Anita and uh, amazing. Cynthia. Yeah. Cynthia Rothrock. Uh, oh, amazing. Yeah, They're just yeah. so amazing. I want to get into a movie with Mel. Mel is actually Mel Novak. Shout out again to Mel Novak. Hi, Mel. I hope you're watching. Um, I know you're in Syndicate Smasher with him coming up. Yes, it's on, it's on Amazon Prime right now. Okay. So please, everybody, for uh, the first 30 days, it's free. So please, everybody, go watch nice. it. Watch it on Amazon. Okay. And uh, please give it a, a good review. If you like the movie, please give it a good review. Good. And also please. ten stars on uh, IMDb. Ten um, stars, baby. It stars Mel Novak and myself, and John McGill and Olya. Uh, from Russia. <laughs> oh, yeah. Does she just do a horse show as well or a modeling shoot or something? I don't, I have no idea. Yeah, she's, a, she's beautiful. She's so is a survivor of the killing fields. Um, uh, Platt, I forget it, I can't think of his name right now. Mark Platt, uh, I can't think of David Platt. Okay. He's, uh, he's in it as well. And uh, Arthur Roberts. Okay. He's done a hundred movies. And, um, it's a, it's a it's a great movie, uh, action packed, and awesome. we it really would love people to go and uh, go to Amazon, please, and check that out, and write a, write a review, please. Uh, real, it'll really help the film. The numbers are fantastic. Great. On and uh, Doug Tochioka directed it, and so did yep. Benny Dejandra. Okay. So that one I'm very very proud of, and also uh, Terror Tales, which is coming out soon. Okay. It's a um, omnibus, or uh, it's an anthology, and has a great wraparound story. And I play the mother of a serial killer who's a whack job, Ooh. which I love playing irreverent, uh, um, crazy roles with an Achilles heel. And I do a lot of improv in all my movies. I come to the table with all these gadgets and all these props, and can we try this or this or this? And uh, fortunately, no one has said no yet. <laughs> but, I love but, it. Yeah, but so 
you know, I'm very excited about that, Terra Tales. And Nation's Fire, which I star in, co-star in. Chris DeGrotta is the star, Nate Bruce Stern is the star, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and Tom Proctor, and Gil Bellows, and so many other people. Wow. Uh, but it's a, un a universal film directed yeah. by the great Sir Thomas Churchill. Ooh, Ooh, I love that. I'm so excited about that. It's coming out in April. And okay. That's nice. And also my movie Sky is on Netflix right now. Okay. The Hollywood Reporter said my performance is uh, astonishing. And really? Okay. And it's fun to the watch that. The best part of the movie is yeah. on Netflix. And yeah. The best part Definitely of the movie is Diane Kruger. I'll play opposite Diane Kruger. I like, opposite Diane I like Kruger. you in the bunny suit. Yeah. So, I love, love, so love The Hollywood Reporter said the... Uh, Landon's performance uh, is so riveting, you wish the entire movie were about her. Really? <gasps> wow. I'm, I'm, watch it. I'm, I'm watching it tonight. I'm grateful to them for saying that. Congratulations. And so that's on Netflix Sorry. as well. Yeah. And, and so I've got Agramon's Gate coming up. I, I leave for Michigan in about a week and a half. Okay. And it's a great movie about possession and a seance goes very, very wrong. And uh, uh, my son Richie killed my husband, his father, when he was 12, mm -hmm. and I've been in an insane asylum ever since, a mental institution, which is no stretch for me to play this role. <laughs> I visited those places twice in my life. Okay. Anyway, oh. But I got out. We all have a story. <laughs> yeah. We all have a story in no, this. No, but, no, yeah. I'm being facetious, but it's a, it's a very, very dr dramatic role and, and very uh, uh, arduous and very... Mm -hmm. um, multi-layered role because you don't know if I'm possessed or I'm not mm. in the, in this particular movie and then I'm going to do Robo Woman after that with the beautiful and talented Donna Lee Heising who mm -hmm. uh, is just uh, a, a, a lovely wonderful talented human being well we've got some movies to watch yeah. don't we Tony yes we do <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I want to get my phone I want I'm so, gonna do it I can't stand it I'm gonna yeah. make, make a note of it Tony right I also want to know let's let's talk um, I want to skip back I want to talk about your father as well but I also want to ask both of you so how do we go from B roles to getting the lead or getting the main I just know, made a nation's fire how, how does that happen? Because, I mean, there's so many of us out there that are doing these. And I want to know, in your opinion, both of you women are both so very successful. So coming out, starting out in the industry, we're going to, uh, we'll use me as an example just for everybody. So, uh, you know, there's always the, the freebies everyone wants you to do and, you know, get yourself on oh, the I screen. I never work for free. Okay. Oh, there no. you go. I paid there them $100. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I, I don't work for free. Okay. No way. Do you agree with that, Tony? I don't work for free. Okay. In the beginning, when you first started, because, you know, there's all these, you know, you have theater. all these people. Theater. Theater's yeah. for free. Yeah. Theater. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, I didn't because because I think I, I admit because my father, of you know, course. he, yeah. I did have that advantage of being set up with a good agent and things like that. Yeah, and I did do um, theater, yeah, mm -hmm. for yeah. sure, yeah. and I might have done in my entire lifetime one or two student films for friends. But okay. other than that, because it's what I do, I I actually tell people, yeah. and it's amazing that we have to say this. I do this for a living. You know, okay. you know what I mean? Yeah, it's I like you, you want to say, yeah. no, but I actually do this for a living. Yeah. So no, this you is have, how I eat. You have to pay me. <laughs> yeah. Do you believe that people that are doing these freebies um, water down your talent? I think they should be careful because yes. more free acting makes makes it difficult for us that do this for a living. Oh, yeah. And then for them in yeah. the future. So it's you do have to be careful. Town. It's a very yeah. true small town. Everybody, believe it or not, knows, uh, you know, the tendrils go so far, yeah. extend so far. Everybody knows everybody. Yeah. Or, you know, there's six degrees of separation, mm. so to speak. But um, if you work for free, then everybody's going to know you work for free and aren't going to pay you. Yeah. And, you know, I, 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 I not only work for free because I don't think it's right, because if you work as hard as a lot of us do, yes. then we should be compensated for our, our very hard work and all the... Yes. Uh, hours and countless innumerable hours that we have put in into the projects mm -hmm. but also it has to do with my self-esteem yes you know if you you know I believe that you absolutely have to have self-esteem and if mm -hmm. if that includes a remuneration then that's self-esteem to me because otherwise people are just going to come at you uh, which they still do all the time mm -hmm. you know sending me scripts I get scripts every single day yeah. uh, 
wanting to me to work for free or use my name to uh, get promote them, promote them mm -hmm. and promote their projects and so forth. And I'm doing another movie called, two other movies called Gate, um, Go Straight to Hell, which I had the lead in, and also California Coven, which is my first movie that I'm producing. I know mm -hmm. you produce movies. Mm -hmm. I, I am producing the film. Um, that's, th that's different, though. You know, too, if mm -hmm. somebody was to come to me and say, hey, can you do this project? Would you like to do this project? And they don't have any money, then I'd be saying, all right, well, I'm not saying that's in your, in your case. Yeah. I would be saying, all right, well, then you want to pay me a percentage, and then I'm a producer. Okay. But you never see the percentage. That's that, the that is the problem. That's you're the problem. right. The back right. end. They always say, "Oh, you get about two percent on the back end, or five percent on the back end." And you know, how uh, do we solve that? Getting contracts in place? Sometimes mostly it's a place, trip. Or? Well, um, I make sure that um, my my manager Joe Williamson takes care of, of my salary, and I see in the fine print about the back end deal, uh, the two or five or whatever percentage, and I, uh -huh. I. I, I just read past that because mm -hmm. um, I just, you know, have in the past known people that have worked for free and said they're going to, oh, I'm going to get a back end deal yeah, and and nothing happens. of all these people. Yeah. And I would say there's probably between 20 and 40. Mm. Not one of them saw a penny of the back end deal mm. and they didn't get paid or they got paid very, very little up front. Mm -hmm. So, okay. no. Okay. Also, That's too, I, I think to that me. a lot of people, when they don't really understand the entertainment industry or at, at, at being an actor or an actress, yeah. that they think, oh, well, let's say whatever the scale is, I can't even think what it is right now, five, six, what is it, oh, oh, a day, um, for a regular budget, or mm -hmm. there's ultra low, there's like, I think that's a hundred and something a day, whatever. The mm -hmm. point is, if somebody was to make five thousand dollars on a on, to play a part, sometimes people think, "Well, God, they just walked in and they got five grand." That's not actually how it works. Yes. To be an actress, there's all the classes that you went to. It's all the training that you do. Oh, it's yeah. all the, the the how hard you work on being beautiful and attractive to play this exactly. character. It's not just this movie. Mm -hmm. It's all the work that you did to get to where you are. Yeah. And believe me, to become a good actress. It, it takes a ton of work. Yeah. It isn't just yeah. showing up and reading lines. Yeah. Because there's subtext, there's subplot, there's yeah. emo, you know, and all the, you know. So that's what my feelings are about that. And I totally agree with you. And that's why I wanted to make this point because, you know, uh, being here from Canada for four and a half years now, I hear a lot from of Canada. people. Yeah, I'm from Vancouver. I did not I'm born know and that. raised. I'm a Canadian. We're in Vancouver. Too. Uh, I, well, I lived in Yale Town in the marina. Are you I that lived downtown. Stanley Park? Yes. Yes. <laughs> and two sisters. I all my relatives mm -hmm. live that are really? still alive, yeah. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. A yeah. Beautiful, beautiful city. I love, love, love it. And the people. I miss it, yeah. And the hospitals are wonderful, too. Everything there yeah. is wonderful. It's beautiful. It's just, it's not here, you know. It's just, no, it was time for me to blossom and... And spread my wings and, you know, grow and uh, as an I individual. I did not know you were from Vancouver. Yeah. So now we are sisters. We are soul sisters and we're Canadian sisters, eh? Yeah. <laughs> when you said A, I was I like, heard the I A love earlier. it. I, I say it all the time. And yeah, I miss I'm it. not even aware that I say it. I'm just not because I do go back there yeah. periodically. I uh, went back there a few years ago to do um, pick me up and came back and was saying A every other word. And we say A because B was already taken. <laughs> I've actually combined huh and A and now I say hey. So I'm oh, still hi. Canadian and I'm American. Huh? So oh. uh, hey. hey. Sorry, hey. <laughs> I know, uh, yeah, hey. she tripped me up. <laughs> you got me there. Yeah. I love it. And so the thing was is that when I came here, all these I had a lot of people that were saying, Oh, you should go do this and I'm an actress and I said, oh, great, like, you know, how much money do you make? Because I would be interested in, you know, getting into the acting business here as well. And, oh, well, you know, I did this for this person, did that. And it was like, well, how are you supposed to survive and how are you supposed to move forward? Because people aren't going to see your quality. And it's about self-love and self-respect self you know, respect and appreciation. Absolutely. And showing people and telling them what you're worth. If you mm -hmm. say, if exactly. you yeah. work for free, you're worthless. Absolutely. And everybody yeah. in town, it gets around. When I yeah. did all the marbles, believe it or not, that was back in, I think, 1982, um, we, we uh, made uh, $25,000, and they doubled our salaries mm -hmm. within a week. That's great. Double. Wow. When I did nice. Eye the Jury for three weeks, I made $72,000. When I did Yellow Hair, wow. it was $70,000. Uh, 
Love it. You know, so see, ladies and, and I, gentlemen out there, you know, you guys, especially like what you say. I love what you said, Tony. Is is it's a preparation, the time you put into it. You don't, it's, mm -hmm. and I'll use it to Very fitness good. competing. Right? Exactly. Though. You Very don't good. just, you know, you train for years and years and years to get on stage. I mean, use this and competition. And you expect it to just be perfect. But yes, mm -hmm. like you just said so succinctly that nobody. Uh, you know, people don't realize what that's what it takes time and the investment so to get to that said. point. Yes, yeah, so um, you can't just walk in the door and and be an actor. You started an actor way back yes. then. Yes, you know. Yeah, you uh, put in your time. And I mean, a lot of people um, um, sometimes at restaurants that are waiters, and mm -hmm. and and I ask them because they just they just have the look. Of, yeah, I don't I don't, I don't know how to explain it. You know, they're just an know. actor and actress. And I always say, Are you an actor? And inevitably they say, yes, I'm an actor. And I say, what are you doing about it? And they say, nothing. I have the passion. And I say, what do you mean by passion? Mm. And they always say, um, I have passion. I'm an actor, so I have the passion. I say, are you going to school? Right. No. Mm -hmm. Are you going to theater? Mostly, no. Yeah. No. Um, what, so what are you doing? Um, nothing, I'm, I, but I'm an actor. <laughs> and I exactly. Said, well, there's two yeah. things I feel, yeah. and I can't stress this enough to young people that are out there that are trying to uh, move forward mm -hmm. and make something of their uh, careers if they're interested in the entertainment industry. Mm -hmm. And that is two things you must have, and that is passion plus persistence. Yes. yes. Most people do not have the persistence. Yeah. Now, I got out of the industry for a long time to take care of my mother, who was quite ill, mm -hmm. and then my father, who was gravely ill with uh, bladder cancer, and he had a, uh, he had a heart, massive heart attack in Vancouver. So I took care of him for many, many years, and I'm grateful that I did not, I would not change a thing, and I'm so, so grateful that I did, because I have no regrets. But when I get back to passion and persistence, people have to have that. Mm -hmm. You have to have that. Now, I met Grant Tinker from CBS years ago and at a Bob Hope charity event. It, this is way long ago. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, in front of everybody at the table, Bob Hope was at the table, too, by the way. And he says to me, you have two things, there are two things that you have to have in order to make it in this business, yeah. and you only have one. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I was terrified, you know, I was very shy. I was with a friend of mine from CBS. Um, and he, he, he said, he said, you have the ability, you have the ability to make everybody love you. You're very kind, you're very uh, reticent, but you're very kind, and you're funny as hell, but you're not ruthless. And I said, what, what do you mean, ruthless? What do you mean by that? I'm sorry, I don't understand. Mm -hmm. He says, see, then you'll, you're never going to make it. Mm -hmm. Because in order to make it in this industry, this is what yeah. he told me, you have to be ruthless. Mm -hmm. You have to have the ability to make other people like you, mm -hmm. which you, I can tell from talking to you all night, instinctively have. Probably because you're from Canada. That's what he said. <laughs> we get that Probably because you're from Canada, <laughs> eh? So he said, but you're not ruthless, and you have to be ruthless. But I, I could never be ruthless. I could never mm -hmm. step on people. I could never sleep with producers to get parts, mm -hmm. uh, which I know we are going to probably get into. Maybe yeah. not. I don't know. We but, are. And, but um, I could never do that. I could never be ruthless and, uh, and use that to get ahead. Mm -hmm. You know, I relied on my talents. I didn't know really anybody, but I relied on uh, studying, uh, working out, taking classes, mm -hmm. and everything that you said earlier yeah. that I will never forget. Thank you for the education. <laughs> I really so, mean that. It's so no, it's true. true. I mean, I mean, you think you said that I nailed it. Never thought it. <laughs> and it and it's true. And and I do want to talk about that because you know, being a woman, I don't really know because I haven't reached my career as successful as you both are. Uh, and I will someday, but I'm not yes, quite there will. yet. Yes, and I look forward to that day. And I'm the type of person, too, um, I'm very Canadian. People call me Canadian nice. I'm definitely not ruthless, but I'm tenacious, and I'm fierce, and I'm, I definitely don't take no for an answer. So for uh, someone like us, when someone tells us, is 
sort of debilitating because they tell us that we're not going to make it if unless we're this certain thing in their opinion. Yes. So yeah. what was the turning point for you how to get through that? Because, I mean, obviously a very influential man. You're sitting at the table with Bob Hope as well. And mm -hmm. you have this man, you're a nice, you know, young woman and you're no, thinking... No, I just went there with yeah. a friend from CBS. Okay. And his name was Ed. He invited me to go. It was a charity event yeah. for Bob Hope, who came on to me, by the way. <laughs> of course he really did. He came on to me. <laughs> did he really? uh, uh, Yes, he did. <laughs> when I went to the back restroom, he, he uh, simultaneously we had to go to the restroom and said a few things. But I, I just kind of laughed it off and thought he was joking because he was, you know, I grew up, he was my hero growing yeah. up. The road to this, the road to that, the road to everywhere. And Bob Hope uh, and Big Crosby were my heroes. Mm -hmm. So I, I was in awe and flattered, but I was terrified, so I just ran. And fear, <laughs> fear can yes. sometimes be a good thing. Um, yep. Fear can sometimes prevent you from doing something that otherwise you wish you hadn't done. Hadn't done. Yes. So on one hand, fear is a very, very uh, negative thing, but on another hand, it uh, kept me grounded. Yes. It has kept me, had kept me, and has kept me grounded. Yes. yes. And I fear, I'm, I'm agreeing with you because fear is super important because it's your it's your red light or it's your red warning. Flag. Yes. Yes. warning. Oh, when you, yeah. I'm going to say this really quickly about any actresses or you're going into an yes. audition. Mm -hmm. If you get that funny little feeling or a little bit of a fear or yeah. like something isn't right, honestly, trust yeah, trust it. It, yeah. it. Listen to your fear and, yeah. and your inner pay voice. I call it, it your inner mm -hmm. voice. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's a feeling. It's not even the voice. It's, it's everything. Yeah. And I think, you know, I, I, I'm not saying anything about men but I think that women have that more intuitively and we're connected a little bit more to it unless you're oh, we do. you know to yeah. that red we flag do. that intuition because we're taught to be able to um, protect ourselves and protect ourselves from you know the animal or the world out there mm -hmm. and and again going into the sexual har sexual harassment going into uh -huh. all that stuff I mean, you're a um, young professional woman, you're impressionable, mm -hmm. even, you know, as we get more mature in our life, how do we get through that? Because, you know, there's women out there right now that are sitting there going, hey, maybe I need to go on the casting couch, maybe I need to sleep with these people in order to get the roles, in order to, 